What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Sporting. Today, we are back to Champions League action as we're competing in the Champions League quarterfinal once again. Both legs will be in this episode, but who are we against? It was left kind of open-ended after the end of last episode. We didn't know who we were going to get, but now we do. Before I reveal who it is, I'll reveal who it could have been. So the teams that won, Real Madrid actually beat Liverpool. Liverpool won the second leg 2-1, but it wasn't enough to overturn their, their home leg deficit. So Real Madrid goes through. That is huge. Liverpool, after winning the Champions League, five of the first seven years of this save have been knocked out in the quarterfinal and now the first knockout round in the last two years. That's kind of crazy. Bayern have beat Barcelona as well. Obviously, we smashed Tottenham 6-0 in that second leg. Manchester United, understandably, beats Feyenoord. Leipzig beats Juventus. That's a pretty big one. Juventus is actually the team that knocked Liverpool out last year. They get knocked out by Leipzig. Ajax knock out Chelsea. That's the biggest shocker. That is insane. Inter knock out Benfica. Not super surprising there. And then Man City knock out PSG. So it's Man City, Inter, Ajax, Leipzig, United, Bayern, or Real Madrid. So who did we get? Well, first, who I didn't want to get. Man City, obviously. Manchester United, obviously. I would have been fine with anybody else. Obviously, the two standout here for the worst teams are Leipzig and Ajax. And the draw went almost as perfectly as we could have hoped. Not as perfectly. We didn't get Ajax, but we got Leipzig. So we're going to be taking on RB Leipzig once again in the Champions League knockout. Last time we played them was in 2025, and it was in the first knockout round, and we beat them 3-1 in aggregate. This year, it's in the quarterfinal. The other matchups, Madrid City, love that. Ajax Inter, love that. And Ajax actually have the lead after the first leg. Like, those are probably the two other worst teams in the competition left, Ajax and Inter. And they got each other. That was perfect. And then United and Bayern, love that as well. United having the lead in Germany in the first leg, not great. I would have loved Bayern to knock them out. But it's looking like that's probably not going to happen. Now we just need to hope Real Madrid knock Man City out. Because I do not want to play Man City. But... Obviously, we've already also drawn the semifinal. It gets drawn at the same time. So who do we get? Well, it was pretty perfect as well. We got Inter or Ajax. So we won't have to face one of the Manchester clubs until the final. I'm sure we're going to have to face at least one of them in the final. And English team has got there every single season. So the odds are we're going to have to face either United or City. But it means our odds of getting to a final are the best they've ever been. We've never had a run this i don't know if easy is the right word because no run in the champions league knockouts is easy but compared to what we have had to go through united Bayern, liverpool this is the easiest run we've had this is the best chance we have ever had to make a champions league final now we just not need to not bottle it after that six nil demolition of tottenham we played three league games and we've won them all actually one touch the portugal game against the sporting braga beat them 3-1 in the first leg played them again immediately after and beat them 2-1 but of course, in these two games that we played against Braga, they had a combined two shots on target and they scored both of them. Love it. We just destroyed them. Like it should have been another 6-0, 7-0 game in these two games, like each of them. But no, they scored every single shot on target they had. We then played Rio Ave in the league, smash them 3-0. Tomas with a goal, Gonzalez with a couple goals. He scored against Braga as well. He's been in some ridiculous form. And I don't know where it's come from because last year he was just straight up bad. In 17 starts last year in the league, he had three goals. In 14 in starts in the league this year, he has 15. Where has that come from? It's like his attributes haven't changed drastically. He's just come out of nowhere. 7.75 average rating. He's been fantastic. So he will be starting today. Like Sesco's stepped it up a little bit, but with that kind of form, that kind of goal scoring form, we can't bench him. Obviously, I talked about we're going Gonzalez. Gonzalez. He's playing next to Tiago and Karna. They're playing very well as well. Nunez, Tabata, we do have the one injury. Pedro Gonzalez got injured in that game against Tottenham. He's still out either 11 days to five weeks, which seems like a little bit of a big kind of spread. Like he could be out a little over a week or a little over a month. Like uh, that, that's a pretty big difference. If it's 11 days, he could be back for the semifinal. If it's five weeks, he might not make it back for a final. Like that's a pretty big difference there. So... Fortunately, we do have Tabata, who I think I fully trust to be able to step in and do a job here. Nunez has been an amazing form so far this season, both in the league and the Champions League. Last five games, 
for an advanced playmaker. That, that doesn't happen very often. Polina in that holding role. In the back line, to be expected, Lucas Dean, Nacio, Ruan, Gusto, and Harazo. Now, we just need to see if we can replicate what we did against Tottenham. In the second leg, to be specific. Because we know we can create a bunch of chances. But this team is just all over the place when it comes to finishing them. So we can have 20 shots in target today and score zero goals. Or we can have 11 shots in target and score seven goals. I don't know which is going to happen. But obviously, I'd prefer the latter. The first highlight of the match comes 12 minutes in. It's been a pretty slow start. I think there's only been three total shots so far. Only two on target. Fortunately, both of them have been for us. But unfortunately, they haven't got in yet. But we have the ball with a chance until Polini gives it away. But unfortunately, we do win it right back. Oscar Gonzalez is going to find Malagusto. He's had plenty of assists this season. Tabata, we're used to him getting a bunch of assists, but not goals. And he shows us why. A few minutes later, we got a deep free kick. Lucasine, near post, Ruan. I mean, he basically only scores with his header, so he was in complete unknown territory right there. Now he has a chance to actually do it with his header, though. We've got a corner. Tabata to put it in. Back post. We do not win it. It's going to fall to Mateus Nunez, so we still have a chance here. We're going to pick it up. See if we can start another attack here. Malagusto, inside to Gonzalo Inacio. Mateus Nunez now. Finds Tabata. And he looks for Karn on a through ball, but he can't quite get there. But we should still get this back and start to recycle it. Inacio lets it drop, but he does pick it up, and he finds Lucas Dean. Now, back into Mateus Nunez. Up to Luca Karna. He's going to run down this left-hand side. He's got a little bit of space to work with. He finds Lucas Dean. Obviously, probably his second to last year here at the club. Mateus Nunez looks for a ball, and he can't quite find him. Now, is this a Leipzig attack? No, we intercepted immediately. What is this highlight? Malagusto now on the ball. Down this right-hand side. Look to put a ball in. He's going to go back to Tabata. Who finds Malagusto once again. This is such a weird highlight. Tabata puts the ball in. Karna, back post. It's a goal. What a freaking weird highlight. But usually highlights that are that long end in goals. If not, it's just the ultimate tease. Fortunately for us, it does end in a goal. And especially fortunately for us, it ends in a goal for us. Malagusto and Tabata playing very well down this right-hand side. And he puts a ball in to Luca Karna at the back post. And Tabata, he led us in assists for like the first four or five seasons of this save. And he's kind of fallen out of the team the last couple of years. But he's back in the assists in the Champions League. We're going to have a kickoff highlight immediately after. And we're going to get the ball back almost immediately. Leipzig have not looked very good on the ball. They've given it away almost immediately every single time we've seen them touch it. Now we're looking to attack. Lucas Dean, back to Inacio, back to Ruan. We're not playing our possession style, even though we do still like to play out from the back. Luke Karn with the ball over the top. That's what, kind of what we're looking for. More direct play. And ends in another goal. We have a goal, then a kickoff, and then another goal. And Oscar Gonzalez gets yet another goal. He is on fire he's just come out of absolutely nowhere he had a good start to the season as well like he started the season really well he, he did well in preseason but i still didn't expect this he has been tremendous and what a finish that is 20 minutes in we're already 2-0 up now we're just a few minutes later about the 29th minute it's gonna be a throw in for leipzig if we know what they like to do they're gonna immediately give the ball away so let's see if that's actually gonna happen caligari back to Gruber, looking for angert okay this is the longest they've had possession in a highlight so far and is this where we intercepted? It is. Mateus Nunez does his defensive duty, intercepts the ball, and now we're looking to attack. We got plenty of men in the box. Bruno Thiago, and it's going to fall, luckily, to Luca Carna. I don't know who would have been offside there, so I think we should still be good, unless there's like a foul on the keeper or something. But we'll see what this says. It's goal. We're 30 minutes in, and it's 3 0. This might be another Tottenham. We beat them 6 0 at home last time. Our next home match in the Champions League, we're up 3 0 after 29 minutes. And it looks like the first half is going to end 3-0 to Sporting. That is as good as it could possibly have gone, really. 12 shots, 9 on target. We don't even have 1 XG. Like I said, this team is all over the place. They're either the most clinical team in Europe or they're Sunday League caliber finishing. There's no in between. We're 60 minutes in and Leipzig don't have a shot on target yet. This has been an absolutely dominant performance to the likes of the Tottenham match. We only have three goals, though. I would like another three. That'd make the second leg pretty dang comfortable. I mean, we don't even need to show it. Like, if we win 6-0, they're not coming back from that. It doesn't matter if they're at home. They're not coming back from that. They have the ball, though. They want to get one back. They need at least to get one back, if not two. Morato on the ball. Going to go all the way back to Alexander Nubel. The former Bayern Munich goalkeeper is going to find Offen Gruber. And they're going to look to build from the back. They've tried to do this multiple times, and that's been the end result. They just give the ball away, and we go on an attack and typically score. Tess Nunez, inside of Luca Carno. He's been tremendous today. Oscar Gonzalez, not a great ball from Luca Carna, but it does get there. Finds Thiago, back to Carna. Is that four? That's four. 
do I need to put that Simpsons meme back in here? Just replace Tottenham with Leipzig? I kind of want to, but like it was just last episode. It feels like I'm overdoing it a little bit if I just immediately throw it back in there, but it's the same thing. We are smashing them right now. An absolute demolition job. And it looks like we might end Leipzig suffering, pull back, and just finish with a 4 0 victory. Absolutely dominant. 24 shots, 12 on target to 4. They did end up having a shot on target. Well done. Well done. Little, little round of applause. Golf clap. But that was ultimately dominant. Luca Karna just absolutely adores being on camera, apparently. He is man of the match every single time we do a game on YouTube. And he's got it once again. A 10 rating, even. His best he's got so far. How big is this result given the wider context? It's a huge result. We played this match as it needed to be played. In our style. And it showed everyone what we're capable of. You've been on a good run lately, but that was something else. I thought we played some pretty tremendous football today. Not just in the attack either. I thought we were tremendous defensively as well. A lot of praise needs to be given to these players. But not just the players, the fans too. Their support is unrivaled, and we love playing in front of them, especially in this competition. Morale seems really high right now. How far can it take you? This is the sort of thing we need to build on and take advantage of. We can cultivate a strong team spirit, We'll be on to something special. Dominant win for sporting. That's kind of an understatement. I mean, if we can't win this competition with this team in this form, playing this well, I don't know if I ever can because this is about as good as a team can get going. That's not Man City. I mean, obviously, we will probably have to face them in the final or Man United. But still, like, I don't know if I can get a better team playing better than what I currently have them going at. This team is just in hot form. And Luca Carna. Head of them all. $124 million. I say it every single time, but he produces for it. You know, there's always a risk. You'd pay that kind of money and you'd get, I don't want to say Jao Felix. He's actually been pretty decent, but uh, Philippe Coutinho, I think would probably be the right answer there. You might get a Philippe Coutinho. We don't got a Philippe Coutinho. Not only is he young and he can still grow, his production is at a ridiculous level, especially on camera. <laughs> And Gonzalez after that is like, yeah, I'm pretty good, aren't I? You should probably give me some money. Okay, he has more interest in joining Arsenal. Why? What have they won or done in general? I don't think I've, they've have they made a Champions League knockout. I, we obviously haven't played them in a Champions League knockout, but I haven't seen them get to a Champions League knockout since I've been at Sporting. So why would you want to join them? Obviously, he only cares about money. Well, that confirms it. He wants to go to Newcastle. Chelsea, a little bit more, but they just got knocked out as well. What's 110 to 145K. I mean, obviously for him, this this is the perfect time for him to try to get a new deal. He's probably never going to be in as good a form as he's currently in. He's currently on 50K. Got three years left on his deal. So, like, the same reasons why he definitely wants to do a new contract here means I do not want to. I don't want to give him the you know new contract when he's at his best form. Because, you know, if he falls off just a little bit, I can get him cheaper. And obviously, that's what I prefer. Especially if we've got time to be able to wait. So... I'm going to get you to sack your agent. And he agrees. See you. Now watch him come back after we play them in the second leg and want a new contract once again. Wouldn't be surprised. We've got a league match coming up in a couple days against Chavez. They aren't very good. They're an 18th, so I'll play a B team. And obviously, I'm not going to play. I don't have to play a full strength team for Leipzig. I, mean, I shouldn't have to. Actually, what this does mean, this 4-0 win means you're going to finally see Nick Cooper in a video. He's definitely going to start this game. It's a perfect opportunity to play Nick Cooper. Obviously, I'm not going to go overboard. We can blow this, but based on what we saw in that first leg, it'd be hard to do. All right, it's time to secure our place back in a Champions League semifinal. We did just play a league match against Chavez, and we smashed them 5-1. Sesco with a brace, a one-minute brace. He scored in the eighth minute, then in the ninth minute. Didn't score from then on out, but I think I did sub him at one point, so that's part of it. Uh, Tomas also got a brace, and then Luke Connor got a goal. I rotated the squad quite a bit. Few players are going to play today, play like Nick Cooper. Want to play him in both games. Same for Seska, really. I think I'm playing him in both games as well as one other player, Sugo, I think, is playing in both. But yeah, just a really dominant victory. We were very good. Now we just need to not bottle a 4-0 lead against Leipzig. The squad we're going to do for this is decently strong, but a decent amount of rotation as well. Gonzalez, Quintana, and Sesco are going to start up top. Quintana hasn't really got any games in the Champions League, at least. So I thought this was a good opportunity for him to get some Champions League football. 
Uh, midfield, we're going Yelhame Santos, Bruno Tabata, and Dario Osugo in that defensive midfield. We're still sticking with this 4 3 3 with the defensive midfielder. I don't know if we'd be able to dominate possession in Germany, so I didn't go with the other one, even though you know, it would be nice to hold on to the ball, not let them score. But we looked so good playing this defensively as well as in the attack that I think this will be fine. Our back line is Bergancha, Inacio starts, Nick Cooper making his video debut. And then Daniel Weigel at right back. Hirazo is going to stay in net. So he's on the bench. I've got Niakate, Malogusto, Mateus Pereira, Mateus Nunez, Bartol Frangic, Nemanja Anicic, and Bruno Thiago in case of emergency. If it starts getting scary and our one of these strikers is sucking, then we've got Bruno Thiago available on the bench. Hopefully we don't need him. 14 and a half minutes in and Leipzig have had the brighter start. You know, last game they didn't have a shot on target until about 75, 80 minutes in. Well, they had one after 40 seconds, so they're ready for this one. But we might still have the first goal, and we are millimeters from actually getting it. How that didn't go in, I do not know. And it looks like the half is going to end nil-nil. We've had a lot more of it towards the end there. End up with seven shots, five on target. They only have one shot on target, and then it happened after 40 seconds. After that, we really clamped up. Most of their shots were kind of longer shots. And I guess I only had one long shot, but... They aren't obviously very high quality shots. They don't have one XG. They only got one of them on target. So we, even with the slow start, we've been the better team today. They don't look like scoring and they need four. So that bodes pretty well for us. We've got a corner now, 66 minutes in. Tabata near post gets headed away. Tabata's going to pick this back up. I would like to see a score goal. You know, stay in some really good form. I would prefer that going into the Champions League semifinals. Julian Weigel now on the ball. Julian, your name, his name's not Julian, it's Daniel. Daniel Weigel finds Benjamin Sesko, but he loses it almost immediately. We're looking like Leipzig did last game. As soon as we get the ball, we give it away. Affen Gruber on the ball now. And Quintana does well to intercept. And he's got a goal. Angel Quintana gets a goal in the Champions League. I'm pretty sure that's his first Champions League goal. He might have scored one in a group stage, but if he did, I don't remember it. Good goal, though. We take the lead 67 minutes in. Now they need five. I think that's pretty much game over. And it looks like Leipzig are going to show very little fight. They do end up with a decent number of shots, 10 shots, only three of them on target, though. And I don't know if we see saw a single highlight of them attacking our goal outside of 40 seconds in. They might have one here very late on, but it's going to mean basically nothing. Velasco through. He's got men in the box. He looks to go himself, and it goes wide. And so this game, unless there's going to be a highlight here. I thought it was over, but it's looking like this game is going to end 1-0, but maybe 1-1, maybe 2-0. Bergancha finds Dario Asugo. Gilhame Santos looks for Quintana over the top. He's already got one. But he's not going to get to that one. Nubel clears it long. Niacates should win this. Does fall to Melendez, though. I would like to keep the clean sheet. That would be preferable. If we can. We do intercept it here. I almost called him Julian Weigel again. Daniel Weigel. And that's going to go out, and that's going to be game. We're going to win 5 0 on aggregate in the Champions League quarterfinal. Now. We're ready to take on either Inter or Ajax. Hopefully it's Ajax. I haven't actually seen the second leg yet. I don't know if it's been played yet, but we will find out who we're going to get. Either one, I'm pretty confident. Based on what we saw against Leipzig, obviously this match wasn't particularly impressive. Like we had a bunch of shots in target. It's just one of those matches where we couldn't finish, but we had a backup front three. We had a pretty backup team in general, and they already had the 4-0 lead, so... In those kind of situations, they do typically kind of play a little bit more cautious, and you don't usually run up the score twice in a row. So you know, I still feel pretty good with these two performances against either Ajax or Inter Milan. And with that win, we make it to back-to-back -back Champions League semifinals for the first time in this save. Now, obviously, that's great, but I want to go one further. I wouldn't be happy just getting to the semifinal. With the way everything has fallen this year, we need to be getting to the final. With the team we've had, with the performance we've been putting in, we need to be getting to the final. But either Ajax or Inter are going to stand in our way. They haven't played their second leg yet. They play it tomorrow. Man City and Real Madrid did play today, and Man City won on penalties. They won on the day 3-1, made it 5-5 on aggregate, and they won the penalty shootout. That sucks. I would have obviously much preferred Real Madrid, but... You know what? Yeah, it's kind of what I expected anyways. Uh, who missed the penalties? Alaba and Bernardo Silva, the former Man City man. Bernardo Silva misses a penalty in a Champions League quarterfinal to send City to the semis. That is 
That is crazy. That's actually a really even match. Real Madrid actually had the higher XG, but City with a little bit more of the chances. Real Madrid actually dominated possession as well. How, is this City team as good as we are normally used to seeing? Fatty obviously up top is really good. Ansu Fadi, very good player. They spent like 170 million. Oh no, 213 million on him. Okay, yeah. They spent 200 million on a left back and 213 million on Ansu Fadi. We also got a region up top, Simon Bach. Pretty good player. Not as good as Bruno Thiago, but pretty good player. And then the rest of the team, they've got uh, Yusuf Demir, who's one of the best players in the game. He's insane in this save. Absolutely insane. Uh, other than that, who else they got? Uh, Pedri, Foden. Another region, I'm assuming, Franca Amadio, who played really well. Pretty solid winger. Doesn't really have much end product, apparently, but he has everything else. I mean, they're not terrifying. You know, looking at that team, like, obviously, there's, you know, Foden, Pedri, Demir, really good. They got two Diaz at center back. Who's this Diaz? Another region, Federico Diaz. Like, this guy's starting from Man City in a Champions League quarterfinal. Am I missing something here? Do they have some injuries or something? Because that, sh that guy should not be playing for Manchester City. He played well, but... Also means if they make it to the final, we will be seeing Isaac Bergman Johansson once again in a Champions League final. That would be amazing. But yeah, the game we're really to be looking at Inter Ajax. Inter are at home. They have to be the favorites, but Ajax have the lead. I'll advance a day. We'll see what the result is. All right, here it is. Who are we getting? Inter or Ajax? Eric Ten Hag is actually the manager of Leipzig. So we beat Ajax former manager. Now we're going to get Ajax themselves in a Champions League semifinal. Obviously, all of a sudden, should see if Man United get through to face City. That'd be a really good tie as well in the Champions League semifinal. Obviously, I wouldn't like that. I would like Bayern to beat them and then to beat Man City, but I don't know. Let's see. One click. Who we got? Come on, Ant. I knew it was. I was going to say, come on, Ajax, but I knew. They actually scored in the 90th minute to give themselves a chance, but Inter looks like they pretty much dominated them. And, Man and Manchester United are out. Bayern Munich. And it's, of course, it's Johannes Maurer. I don't know if I ever showed him, but he's a player that I was going after for like three years. I wanted this guy. He says he's a striker. He would he would have been a midfielder for me. He just doesn't have the finishing to be a striker. But look at him. He's amazing just as a midfielder, as an attacking central midfielder. I really wanted Johannes Maurer. He had a release clause of like in the hundreds of millions and they wouldn't let him go for anything less. So I just, at that time, I couldn't afford him. So he eventually went to Bayern Munich for 89 million from Stuttgart. And he's been pretty good for him. He's got 11 goals and 14 assists this year for them in the league. He's got four goals and nine starts in the Champions League. He gets the two goals to send them to a Champions League semifinal to take on Manchester City. Obviously, it would have been cool seeing the two Manchester clubs play each other. But for us, if we want to actually win the final, Bayern Munich winning is the best thing that could have happened. Now they just need to beat City. But before we get there, we're still going to have to beat Inter. That's not going to be easy. We have done pretty well against them previously, but they're still a really good team. We look at our previous meetings. Uh, let's go to the schedule. I think it's the way we see this. Uh, yeah, Inter, past meetings. So we, I think we've played them quite a bit. Yeah, we've played them four times in the groups and once or twice, I guess, in the Champions League quarterfinal. In the groups, we have beat them twice, drawn with them twice in the Champions League quarterfinal last year, actually. We beat them 2-0 and then lost 2-1 away from home. So, yeah. I don't know. It's not going to be easy. We, we know it's not going to be easy, but we beat them last year. And our team is better this year. Enters might be as well, but I doubt they've improved as much as we've improved. So, I'm actually still pretty confident. Obviously, I would have much preferred Ajax, but you know what? I would much rather play Inter than Bayern, City, United. So we can't really complain. So we've got three games, two league games, and a Tacha de Portugal second leg before we take on Inter. Gil Vicente in between as well. We're actually the team in second, but more likely than not, we're going to have the league tied up before we even get to this Inter match. We are 10 points clear of Vicente on the same amount of games played. So if we beat Belenensis and beat Morins, or if Gil Vicente drop any points, we have Bears basically guaranteed the league title. So we're actually going to secure it relatively early and Benfica pretty far off the pace. They're actually four points behind Vicente. Porto just completely gone. Like they're nowhere close. I don't know what happened to Porto this year. They've had a terrible season. I mean, compared to everyone after them, it's not terrible. Bovista seventh with 42. 
but for how good they should be the fact they're legitimately behind Braga and Belenensis significantly behind Jill Vicente I mean I think they have fired their manager as well so that's kind of the price you pay but yeah answer Milan is gonna be next episode we've already won the league before I don't think we need to see us win the league again but this is the big this is probably the biggest match in the series so far we've had other Champions League semifinals but this is the best chance we have ever had of getting to a final against a team that we have a good record against in these kind of matches two games away from our first champions league final then we just have to win it if you made it this far why don't you like the video subscribe and click the bell the links to all my socials and my twitch are in the description i really appreciate all your support thank you all for joining me and i'll see you next time